Welcome to It's Your Date with Destiny with Apostle Vivian and Pastor Gemma Duncan of Divine Destiny Worship Center in Diego Martin. For the next 30 minutes, join us as we take you on a journey of maximizing your potential and realizing your goals through Jesus Christ. Whether it's on a Sunday, Tuesday, or Friday, or any other day of the week, a warm welcome awaits you at Divine Destiny Worship Center, a place where your full potential is discovered. Here's a special invitation to join us at our sanctuary. For Lord says through Jeremiah in Jeremiah 29:11, for I know the thoughts I have for you, thoughts for your good and not for evil, and to give you an expected end. Uh, that is the King James. But as you begin to look into the other versions, you hear things like thoughts to prosper you. Uh, you hear thoughts to give you your well-being, thoughts to give you a future with a hope. But the Amplified says thoughts and plans. In other words, God wants to go beyond just thinking about you and actually set a plan in place. First of all, to get you back on your feet. Secondly, to heal you on the inside. And then to put you on the start line, starting line, or what they call it, the starting blocks, and say to you, take off. You can get the job done. I'll be your alpha and your omega and your shama in between. I decree you're a finisher. You can make it. Not if you try. You can make it with Jesus and Holy Spirit and the Father egging you on because they know what they have placed in you. So good morning. I'm Apostle Vivian Duncan and we have my wife, Apostle Gemma and all the covenanters of Divine Destiny which have sent to the House of Champions welcoming you to this program. It's your date with destiny, the television um, of our media ministry. And uh, for those who may have joined us late, this is the first time you are viewing us, welcome. But we also want to address you and all our uh, uh, faithful viewers. This is the end of June, the beginning of July. The year has now been cut in two. All of the first half is over. And the second half is about to start. I want to ask you again, what is it you told God he will do for 2018? Have you started? Having started, have you Stopped because of opposition? Having stopped, have you forgotten the whole idea? Or is that just a temporary hesitation? You will now get up as I speak to you now and say, God, I'm going after it. Give me the grace, give me the strength. The resources, both human and financial and material, he knows where they are. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. But why would he provide for you if he knows you're not going to get the job done? So get up. Get yourself ready. This is the time to arise and fulfill your destiny and purpose. Amen. Good. And we've been doing for the entire year from source to soaring uh, the series. So many people have been healed and delivered. I mean, we are seeing this thing happening, a divine destiny. It just happens over and over and over as we continue to trust God. Why not take a look right now at a little minute or two of one of our deliverances or deliverance sessions that took place recently? Hallelujah. This song comes out of, a, out of that passage of scripture in Jeremiah chapter 18 in which the pot 
the clay was on the potter's wheel. Wheel and the motion of the wheel talk about seasons. But the, uh, the element that is important there is seasons that God uses to shape us. And as I, I preached some time ago about it, that sometimes even on the, on the wheel, where the potter himself, an expert, because God didn't tell him, go down to a potter's house. Choose which one you want. He said, no, this man who has a reputation for doing it right, doing it right, he said, go down to the potter's house. Not wannabe potters. Seasoned potters. When, when he went down there, the situation began to speak to him. What did he hear? That even when the God himself, God himself is taking you through seasons, sometimes you crack under the pressure. He said, but it's all right. You know, everybody else in this congregation should be standing up. Go, what do you ain't get yet come in? No. And I speak it as, a, as, as your father in the spirit to prepare you so you don't backslide when the pressure begins. Because God will make us a strong people. A people that will help others to understand yes. what it is to go through seasons. Something that lasts longer than others. Sometimes that you prophesied away and thought by tomorrow it's over. But he said, you got to go wrong again. You're on the wheel. you got to go wrong again. Is it because he was stubborn? He said, no. It's because I want to make you stronger. Yes. He said, but when it's over, I'm going to decorate you. I'm going to put you on my shelf for display. That those who need, who need a pot like you, those who need a vessel of honor like you, going to grab hold of you and your experience. Ooh, so it's, it's all right to feel. It's all right to feel that you must question God. It's all right. I, 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 he don't mind it because he said, prove me. He said, prove me. And how do you prove? You prove by probing. You're probing with some questions. He said, that's all right. That's all right. He said, but at the end of the day, know that I am preparing you. Oh, As somebody that will stand with honor. Even the young men and the young women who came with, 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 with Brother Shabradi, I prophesied to you that all you've been going through is God trying to make you into a man of honor, a woman of dignity. Even with daddy, mommy, and whoever else, your, your, your guardians not taking care of you the way they're supposed to. God say, I will take care of you. Give me your life. Put yourself in my hands. Hallelujah. So I can't even tell you, dry up your tears. I will say to you, cry. I'll say to you, ball. But there's coming a point when God will say, I've made you into what I want you to be. Now I shall put you there. And everyone will know you have my brand on you. You have my brand, my brand that says kingdom citizen, kingdom citizen. The world has been waiting for the manifestation. We give God the praise. I know your life cannot be the same again. And that's not a cliche. It is a reality. Once you come into the atmosphere where a strong apostolic prophetic grace is active, watch God do that thing for you. So we are releasing to you another excerpt of our series. Moving from sores where you are hurting and you feel like nothing up the staircase to the place where you actually soar with eagles. Call up someone as you view because they need the same healing that you have received. Receive it now. Something like the present. The present is a doorway to move from the past into the future. So if you don't manage the doorway well, 
then anything will pass through. And where you're sitting right now, that's the doorway to the rest of your life. What you are listening, uh, me saying, is forming a frame for you. And you have to decide, I have to decide whether or not I will let the things of my past continue to pass through that frame and influence my future. And that's where we come to the thing called roots of bitterness. So, 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 so let me read this part from the book concerning roots of bitterness, and then we will identify some roots that are causing the sores and how it's possible for the sores to become roots. It's, it's kind of complicated, but if you pay attention, you're going to get your freedom. Any attempt to reform an individual through punishment or education will only accomplish just as much as a landscaper does. This is where we um, left off last week. The lawn looks beautiful for a while after cutting. But within a few days, it must be cut again. Because the mower cuts the leaves, but the leaves, but leaves, sorry, the roots intact. So hear this. Meaningful change in behavior only begins when the roots of bitterness within the spirit are dug up. I read it again. Meaningful change in behavior only begins when the roots of bitterness within the spirit are dug up. And that's why the word that the Lord is releasing in this series is coming at you like an excavator, taking you back to some things you thought you had dealt with, but all you did was store away. And I'm saying to us, it's those things that we have stored away that continue to seep the poison, the acidity into our system. It is only the word of God which divides soul from spirit that can provide the kind of firepower needed for such a battle. In if in no divisions. Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Bring that, bring that scripture for me. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. I want you to understand what... Uh, let me see. Right. The power of the word as an agent of change. What are we going to understand right now? And that's the word of God. As an agent of change. Now, if you, if you read from the top of Hebrews chapter 4, Verse 12, Hebrews chapter 4, you will see that the writer is talking about Jesus as our Sabbath, Jesus as our rest. And because Israel missed it, Israel continues to be restless. They keep the Sabbath, but they are restless. Why? Because Israel is, is, is not yet fully settled in their original country that God. Uh, um, promised them when they would have crossed Jordan and come into Canaan. And right now they're in contention. Right now the Palestinians are, are really fighting them. They, just last week the, the Palestinians crossed into a prohibited area. 17 of them were shot dead. This week same thing again. Seven were shot dead. So it, it's looking like there's a, a war brewing there again. Why? Because Israel missed their cue. When God was ready to bring them into the promises, they missed it. They were supposed to cross over Jordan after about three months into Canaan. But they spent 40 years on this side, going wrong in circles. And it became inscribed imprinted on the generations that followed. 
that they would defy whatever God says. And the ultimate was the rejection of Jesus, whom God sent as the Messiah. So now they are still looking for the Messiah because they were looking for somebody who come riding on a horse to beat up the Romans, to set up a new kingdom physically so that even when Jesus was about to leave, uh, the, the disciples and all the, uh, uh, what they call them, the apostles and all said, so Jesus, what about the kingdom you're talking about all the time? He said, so long I'm with you and you ask me about the kingdom, the kingdom is in you. This kingdom is not about physical buildings and palaces. It's about the change in you. Uh, moving from religion and man's way of doing things to God's way of doing things. He said, that's the kingdom. That's why you'll notice, uh, if you want evidence of how the kingdom operates, read the parables. It's always, the kingdom of God is like none to. In other words, this is how kingdom people live. Are we understanding? Amen. This is how kingdom economy runs. Kingdom legal affairs run. And he, Jesus, I mean, he just, he, he just uh, uh, put one story after another, one parable after another, made up of coded information about kingdom living. Coded because only those who want to understand and live it will be able to receive the truth. So for the rest of us, it's just stories in the Bible, in the Gospels. But he was really saying, here is an example of how to treat people. You have a son who walk away, and son here stands for anybody who was close to you and walked away and went and do what he wanted to do, and he's now coming back. What do you do? Get from here, you stink like the pig you just come from. I disown you a long time. No. You say, in the kingdom, what you do is sit by your window looking for him to come back. And long before he comes back, you have items prepared that indicate you don't just receive him back, but you want him back. Amen. So you reinstate him. That is kingdom. Religion say, hello, tell him, you know what, he stinks self inside here. Get out of here. Uh, I have three, three sons. And you're not one. Hey, you're talking Christians, boy. And some actually say, I was praying, and God tell me, don't let you come back in this house. Hey, we playing thing, you know. I perceive you could say that because your children and them never, never do you that. Well, that's true. But if we deal with the word, I can tell you straight up, kingdom says, when the prodigal son comes back, you receive him. You reinstate him. <laughs> so, so read this. I, I, right. So when Israel messed up, God says through Paul, the rest that I promised Israel it is still available. There remain it a rest. Bring me verse 9. That's in verse 9. Although Israel refused to take the rest, that is, they refused to obey God, God says, I have not rescinded my promise. I have not taken it back. It's still available to all who will receive my instructions and are willing to live thereby. Your life will move from one of restlessness to one of a peace. Because I'm telling you, you could go by, by the beach or you could go up on a mountain by a resort and sit down and lie here for a whole week. If you don't know Christ as Savior, if you don't live for God, you will just get a tan. That's all you're going to get. But if you are the kind of person who say, I, I, Captain, whatever you ask me to do, I'm willing to do it. 
My human uh, uh, element in me will resist many times. My human element will, in me will make me deviate many times. But once I sense your Holy Spirit telling me, this is the way, walk in it, I'm going to come back. There's a very interesting scripture. I think I alluded to it uh, uh, this week up in Sangre Grande. Uh, um, should I? Yeah, you need it. Go, go into Isaiah chapter 30 for me. And we'll come back to this. Isaiah 30. And give me verse 17. Isaiah 30 verse 17. I prophesy that you will remember scriptures just like how I do. Yeah. Somebody say, Lord, I receive it. Lord, I receive it. Good. Look at verse 17 of Isaiah 50. Let's read. One thousand shall flee at the rebuke of one. At the rebuke of five shall he flee till he be left as a beacon upon the top of a mountain, as an ensign on a hill. God's desire is to do exactly what um, Jesus said, we are the city that's set on the hill. We are the what? And once a city is, on, is set on a hill, it becomes a guidepost. Destiny anointing oil. I want to anoint my hands right now. And I'm listening to the Lord about a family feud. Someone viewing us right now. You've been having some serious contentions in your family. So I'm going to anoint my hands stretching my hands forth, and I decree that that fighting and the shoving and the cursing will cease in Jesus' name. Father, when you speak, we know that you are targeting specific areas, specific points of difficulty. And Lord, this one is about family that's fighting brother fighting brother, brother fighting sister, father and son fighting, mother and son fighting, even to the point where injury is taking place. And you are viewing me today, God says to you right now, receive healing in your family. And he has one prescription for any pain. If you take the prescription, watch the healing take place. He says, forgive, 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 forgive and then forgive again and watch God bring a peace in that home. Amen? You must get desperate enough to say, God, we want peace in this house. Blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of God. Amen. Right. We are into the second half of the year. Wow. And we are still offering to you this series from source to soaring. Why not go up on our on Facebook, find our address, DDWC, and view the programs that you missed. View the services that you missed. And on YouTube, become a subscriber to our uh, page and you know what's going to happen every time we upload our TV program you will be notified that Divine Destiny Worship Center is on this week why not share it with other people one sister she shared with her aunt who was living way in London the aunt had injured her back and as the aunt was viewing she said to her niece, your apostle just suddenly said, that woman with the back pain, receive your healing. And voila. She said she put her hand on her back and she was healed. Why not be a, 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 an agent of healing and deliverance by sharing what you receive on the pages? Amen? Good. We have... Three radio programs every week, 98.1, 9 p.m. on a Monday, it's a date with destiny. 107.1, 9.30 p.m. on a Tuesday, living the more abundant life. 98.1, 3 p.m. on a Friday, ask Pastor Gemma.
it really is an opportunity to receive ministry outside of the normal church setting. Amen? Good. Why not join us this Sunday at 9 a.m. for our services in every branch, including our newest branch, Rio Claro. It's called Divine Destiny Liberation Worship Center in the yellow building downstairs opposite Royal Castle in the heart of the town. Amen. We look forward to meet you there and to release the grace of God upon you. Uh, and we have our testimony corner again this week. Receive what this person has experienced and made happen to you as well. God is still in the business of changing the rhythms of people's lives. My name is um, Omar Mess from St. Vincent. From St. Vincent. Oh, that's the guy. Yeah. Amen. Boy. Jesus, Lord have mercy. Huh. I would be speaking on behalf of our entire family. My family and I. But yeah, bring the mic right up. My on. family and I, we have been suffering from a generation, from a generation course for over mm. ten years. Jesus. To be honest with you, I didn't know about this course. I born into this course. Sometimes I ask myself what I did to this office. Not until, not until about a month ago, the 23rd of April, mm. I came to realize that God is real. Come on, give God a praise. That song was for him tonight. Hallelujah. When I say real, nobody can tell me God is real. He came and he showed me that he is real. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Lord have mercy. Next time on Divine Destiny Worship Center's program, this program, it's your date with destiny. You will hear. It becomes a lighthouse. Do you, hey, hey, hey. When you go outside the, the, the um, gate today, stand for a little while, or if you're driving, stop for a little while, and especially if you're passing through by exhaustion or coming out of multipurpose, stop for a little while and look left, look right. And you know what you'll see? Both sides of the road, both the north and the south, are coming up to the front of divine destiny. Watch it good. That's why they call where we are right here Green Hill. Huh? We are at the top of the hill. When you get a chance to read Isaiah chapter 2 and Micah chapter 2, and you'll see both of them talk about a prophecy concerning God's house being set upon the hill and people flowing towards it. Uh, it's, it's against the laws of nature. It's against the laws of sociology because nothing flows up. Everything's supposed to flow down. And until we meet again, I'm Apostle Vivian Duncan. On behalf of my wife, Apostle Gemma, and all the covenanters of Divine Destiny Worship Center, the House of Champions, declaring to you, you began life as a winner. Don't live it as a victim or die as a loser. You are a good idea because when God made you, he had destiny on his mind. God bless you until we meet you at Divine Destiny Worship Center. Amen. Continue to reach your goals through Jesus Christ. This has been It's Your Date with Destiny, a production of Divine Destiny Media Ministry. Until next time, you began life as a winner. Don't live life as a victim or die as a loser. For when God made you, he had destiny on his mind.